بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء وقال تعالى ايضا نساؤكم حرث لكم وقال تعالى ايضا وعاشروهن بالمعروف فان كرهتموهن فعسى ان تكرهوا شيئا ويجعل الله فيه خيرا كثيرا صدق الله العلي العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي ربنا يسر ولا تعسر وتمم بالخير وبك نستعين يا فتاح ربنا زدنا علما اما بعد الحمد لله we praise and we thank and glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the magnificent rabbul izza that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is that one who can claim power that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the one in reality who has power if there are people on the face of the earth or if there is any creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that feels or consider itself to be powerful magnificent capable of having authority over other things understand my dear respected brothers and sisters that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is the rabb of izza he is that rabb and that king who give these things and these people that power and that ability and that same Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who can remove it and will remove it whenever he wishes so we praise and we magnify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he owes to be praised my dear respected brothers and sisters when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he created mankind he created one man and that man was Adam alayhi salatu was salam he created him by himself Adam alayhi salatu was salam was in Jannah and he found that the other creations that were around him were not of his kind there was some made out of some creations made out of light like the angels there were inhabitants in the jannah but there was no creation that he could have seen that was exactly like him blood and flesh a human being and my dear respected brothers and elders allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he created mankind with desires he created mankind with wishes he created mankind with needs and naturally adam alayhi salatu was salam my dear respected brothers and sisters naturally in his heart he started feeling a need for a companion he started feeling within his heart that he was lonely that he had no one to share with no one to live with no one to reside with so therefore he makes dua to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he expresses this to allah oh allah i am in need of a companion as alama ibn kathir radhiallahu ta'ala anhu he mentioned in his book of qasasul anbiya that Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu he describes as to how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fulfilled this dua for Adam alayhi salam where Adam alayhi salatu was salam he was sleeping and while he was asleep Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from his left ribs Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he created another creation another human being so Adam alayhi salatu was salam he wakes up and he sees this creation sitting at his head and he asks what are you so she replies i am a woman thus adam alayhi salatu was salam he asks her why are you here for and she replies to adam alayhi salam so that you may live along with me immediately the angels on seeing this and as if we recall there is a story where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to prove to the angels that he knows and they don't know and thus Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he teaches Adam alayhi salam the name of all the different things so the angels immediately ask Adam do you know her name and Adam alayhi salatu was salam said her name is Hawa so from this time my dear respected brothers and elders these are the parents of mankind from this couple from Adam alayhi salam and Hawa alayhi salatu was salam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has brought many men and many women he himself in the holy quran he says ya ayuhan nas o mankind ittaqu rabbakum fear your lord 
Who is your Lord? Alladhi khalaqakum min nafsi wahida. He is that one who has created you from one soul, one nafs. Wa khalaqa minha zawjaha. And from that same soul, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has created for it a zawja, a spouse, a peer that can be along with Him. And what happened with this peer? What happened with this couple? Batha min huma rijalan kathira wa nisa. From then on, then you started seeing a lot of men and a lot of women. And this was the means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created so that mankind can spread on the land. The usage of a man and a woman. Bring both of them together in marriage. And from then on, my dear respected brothers and elders, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made this permissible for mankind. Where we are able to find someone who is suitable for us as a companion. Someone who we can share with. Someone we can share our ideas with, our lives with. Someone who we can look forward to in helping us getting better in the Akhirah. Helping us getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This verily, my brothers and sisters, is a ni'mah and a great gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for those of us who are not married, we make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us pious wives or pious husbands, inshallah, ameen. But in this marriage life, my brothers and elders, everyone will describe it to you the same way. Marriage is not a bed of roses. You cannot enter into a marriage. You cannot enter into living with someone and expect it to be the sweetest thing ever. It will not happen like this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his infinite power, he shows us how powerful and how great he is. He created human beings. And every single human being that existed, that is existing and will exist, inshallah, they are all totally different. They have different eyes, different eyebrows, different noses, lips, tongue, teeth, face, fa the shape of the face, the color of the face, the texture of the hair, the size of the palms of the hand, the fingertips, everything is different. In every single one of us here and every human being that Allah has created. This shows the power of Allah. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has placed a difference in every single individual. And not only physically, my brothers and sisters, but also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed different in, uh, difference in, within us in the way we think, in the way we speak, in the way we express ourselves, in the way we make decisions. About the emotional ways we carry about ourselves upon hearing news. There are people that as soon as they hear bad news, they start crying. There are people who as soon as they hear bad news, some of them, it comes like nothing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He created all different types of temperaments. And this is the power of Allah. There is no one who can point at the faults or the qualities of an individual and point them to be as wrong or something bad because in reality, He's criticizing the creation of Allah. So my brothers and elders, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created all of us different. And thus Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to come together in a marriage where a man who has certain qualities, certain ways of thinking, he comes together under a contract of marriage with a woman. She has totally different ways of thinking, mentality, likes and dislikes. Now what happens, my brothers and elders, is that many a times in our homes, we become married, we bring someone to live with us, and the first few weeks or first few months of our marriage starts going good. It is very nice. It is very enjoyable. It is the, honey, the honeymoon time. But as time goes by, we start taking one another for granted. And we start overlooking at those good things that this person has. We start overlooking at the good qualities that this person has. And we only start concentrating on those bad habits and those things that we don't like from them. And eventually as the time goes by and the years goes by, my dear respected brothers and elders, problems start taking place in the home. To the extent that sometimes a husband, he has the audacity and he has the bravery of hitting his wife. He has the bravery of slapping her and seeing blood coming out of her face or any part of her body. He has the bravery of even doing this in front of his own children. He has the bravery of doing this in front of the people outside to show that he is man. Wallahi, my brothers and elders, this is not allowed in Islam. This is something 
that we must always avoid verbally, physically. We must never let anyone commit this kind of actions. We must never let anyone hit his wife or treat his wife like she is a dog on the streets, in the public, or even in the house. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a responsibility. And that responsibility is not taken by physically hitting your wife to, to be able to apply a rule in the house or explain something in the house. This is not proper. When we look at the life of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the ummahatul mu'mineen, the azwajul mutahharat, the, mother of the, believe, the mothers of the believers, the wives of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they also had misunderstandings, my brothers and elders. We are not saying that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he, he was sinful or he used to fight his wives. Na'udhu billah. We are not saying that. We are saying that they also had misunderstandings. What proves this is a hadith that is mentioned in Bukhari. Where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says to Aisha radallahu ta'ala anha, he expresses to her that, Oh Aisha, I know when you become upset with me. I can sense it. Imagine this is the Rasul of Allah telling his wife this. I can feel when you are angry with me. I know it. And he expresses how. He says, when you are upset with me, and you take an oath, when you are happy with me, and you take an oath, you say, Wa Rabbi Muhammad. I swear by the Lord of Muhammad. But when you are upset with me, you take an oath, Wa Rabbi Ibrahim. You say, I swear by the Lord of Ibrahim. And thus, that's how I know when you are upset with me. Subhanallah, even Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his wives had the little reefs. None of us can negate these things. They were also human beings. Aisha radallahu ta'ala anha, she says to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O Rasul of Allah, your name leaves my tongue, but the love that I have for you doesn't leave my heart. This is the reply of Aisha radallahu anha. What do we learn from this, my brothers and elders? It's the approach of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Is the akhlaq of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When you look at the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam way of being our own people, there wasn't anyone who, can, who could have complained on him and said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoke harsh to them or that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hit them or that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam reprimanded them in a way that they make them feel ashamed in front of the entire congregation. You will never find this in hadith. You will never find in hadith the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hitting even an animal, even a donkey. You will never find in hadith the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hitting or beating any one of his wives or any one of his children. This was his character. He was a person who was very patient. And we claim to follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but what happens is that we only follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the things that we want to follow him. These are the things, my brothers and elders, that we must look forward in following the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In our everyday lives, how do we live with our family? This is something that we must always look into. Look into the seerah. Ask the ulama. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Holy Quran, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ If you don't have the knowledge of going about in doing something, you just get married and you are finding so many problems in your marriage life and you do not know what you can do to fix these problems. The, pro the, the fixing of this problem is not by applying punishments in the house. It's not by separating and divorcing your wife. It's not by ill-speaking your wife with other people. The solve to the problem is not even by finding another wife. You need to go to the people who has the knowledge, the experience, the time, who will be able to help you and aid you in these problems? فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ If the knowledge is not within you, then it is essential upon you to go to the people of knowledge and ask them for help. I mean, I am only one and a half years married. What, can I, what kind of advice can I give you all about marriage? Majority of you have kids that are probably older than me. But in reality, this is Islam, my brothers and sisters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, and this is very interesting, an ayat in the Holy Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَعَاشِرُوهُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ When you are living with your wives, you live with them in ma'roof, in peace, in harmony, in goodness. This is in reality the way you're supposed to live in the house. In goodness, in ma'roof. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says something that is very interesting. He says, وَإِنْ كَرِهْتُمُوهُنَّ 
And if there is something that you dislike from your wives, فَعَسَى أَن تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَيَجْعَلُ اللَّهُ فِيهِ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا Then understand that probably you dislike it, probably you hate it, probably you don't want it anymore. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala probably has placed in it great amount of goodness. Subhanallah. Who has more knowledge than Allah? Whose knowledge can ever come close to the knowledge of Allah? No one. So Allah knows. He knows in reality that there are things that we will dislike. He's saying it in the Quran, you will dislike things. But you don't know. You don't have the knowledge of the goodness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed in this person for you. Another hadith, my brothers and elders, it goes along with this ayah. Where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, لا يفرك مؤمن مؤمنة إن سخط منها خلقا فرضي منها آخر. This is something that is very interesting. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says that the mu'min, a believer, he should not harbor enmity for his wife. He shouldn't hold ill feelings in his heart for his wife. There are things that we see sometimes that our wives do, or the wives we see things that our husbands do. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, do not allow ill feelings to grow in your heart and remain there for that person. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he tells us why he says, if he dislikes something in her, then surely, understand, then surely he will be pleased with another quality of hers. So yes, my brothers and elders, we will find those things that we don't like. But in the long run, if you look at things, at the qualities that she possess, in reality, we will realize that there is great benefit in our wives. There is great benefit in this person that we have choose to live our lives with. So my dear respected brothers and elders, it is a message for myself. And it is a message for every single one of us. We usually like to hear bayans about all different things. Dhikr of Allah, reading Quran, how to gain Jannah, about sinful things and this thing and that thing. But we forget sometimes <laughs> that our religion, that our akhlaq, that our deen and our iman is in the home and it lies in the home. It relies in the home. For the Prophet sallallahu he said in hadith that the best believer is that one who has good character and he is good to his family, he is good to his wife. This is the best believer. That person who he is outside showing his friends a smile and when he goes at home he is with the same smile and face. He's outside and he's meeting people and he's happy. And he's expressing this happiness with the people. And when he goes at home, he also expresses his happiness to see his wife, to see her husband. This is the life of a mu'min. This is the life of a believer. Love also exists in Islam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he showed great amount of love to his wives. And also he had displeasure. Also sometimes there were things that he didn't like. As we also find in hadith, the Prophet wasallam separated himself from his wife for a good period of time, which approximately one month. But we will never find that the Prophet wasallam he went on to anything further than this, like divorcing his wives or beating his wives. My dear respected brothers and elders, this is something that we must be careful with. This is something that we must always warn people against and speak against. The ill treatment of our wives and our husbands in the home. Because what happens is that this continues and the children that start seeing this, they start seeing that the father is coming at home, he is angry because the food is not hot, he is angry because the food was not prepared on time and he starts insulting. He starts telling his wife words that his own, the, the child will find that my own parents are telling me not to use these words but daddy is still calling mommy those same nasty words. We will find this. And children are very smart. Do not get it twisted. Children are very smart. They will memorize and they will pick up on things that you cannot even imagine they would. And when they get older, this is the same exact example that they will follow, my brothers and elders. And we don't want this. We want to straighten things in our house, inshallah, so that our generation, inshallah, can be proper followers of Islam. We want to make our wives... The madaris of our children, the madaris of our neighbors. People can look at them, people can look at our family, 
They can look at the way we live. They can look at the harmony that is within our marriage and they can take us as examples. They can point those fingers at us and say, I want my marriage to be like this brother and this sister. Because you can see them that they are struggling for the akhirah. You can see that they are wanting to get closer to Allah. You can see that they are aiding one another in gaining Jannah and gaining paradise. And this is where we're supposed to concentrate. Yes, we are married, we are sharing a life with someone, but we are not just living a life just like that. We are concentrating. In, if, in reality, I love this person. In reality, I consider this person. If I was brave enough to go to her father and ask for her hand in marriage, it means that I want to be with this person. I have changed my entire life. I leave all my friends. I leave all my company. All the linemen, as we say. All the fun to be able to spend the 24 hours of my life and share it with a person. You know what you did when you asked for, the, for her hand in marriage. You are the one who made the decision. So when you take this responsibility, it means that now you are taking someone who you are going to work with together. So that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He takes you from this world and He takes her from this world, inshallah, you will resurrect together with her and both of you will reside happily forever in Jannah. And this is the goal. We are not getting married just to enjoy ourselves in the dunya, but we also want to see ourselves happy along with our wives happy with us in Jannah. So we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us this quality of patience, that we become tolerant, that we go to the people that has the knowledge and the experience to seek their help, to seek their advice so that we may fix our marital problems. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from falling in such a trap of shaitan where we will be maltreating our wives and beating our wives and treating them like slaves. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from falling in this category. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He fix the reefs and the problems that we have within our marriages. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He fix the marriages of those couples that want to get divorced right now. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reunite them again. And we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept whatever little sacrifice we are making and forgive us for our sins and grant us all Jannatul Fardaus. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.